This video will show how, the, how to compute the Laplace transform of an exponential. Um, again, once you understand how these things work, you typically don't do this by computing the integrals that we're going to compute. You do it by looking this up in a table. But hopefully this will be helpful to help you understand the issues of uh, regions of convergence and the difference between uh, bilateral and unilateral transforms as well as uh, give you another uh, uh, Laplace transform pair that you can use. So the signal we're going to take the Laplace transform of in this video is x of t is equal to e to the minus a t times u of t. Okay, so what does this look like? Well, the e to the minus a t part um, assuming that, if we assume that a is greater than zero, then this is a decaying exponential that looks something like this. Whoops, had that decay way too far. So it'll approach zero, but never get there. u of t, as I'm sure you all remember, is the unit step function that looks like this. So if I take the product of these two, I get a function that's zero, for values of t less than 0, jumps up to 1, and then decays exponentially. Okay, so this is x of t as a function of t. Okay, adding this u of t is a common trick that you'll see done a lot, and basically what this u of t is doing is just making sure that x of t is 0 for values of t less than 0. So Anytime you're dealing with causal systems and signals that are zero for values of t less than zero, uh, well, not anytime, because so, sometimes people get lazy, but most of the time you'll see this u of t tacked on. Okay, so basically what we want to do is find the Laplace transform of this x of t that looks like this. So we'll do that by saying that the Laplace transform is the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus a t u of t e to the minus s t d t. Okay, and because u of t is zero for values of t less than zero, that means that I can change this lower limit of integration to zero, which means now that I'm looking at uh, this is is written. This is the bilateral Laplace transform. Now it looks like the unilateral Laplace transform. So in this case, because my signal starts at zero and goes uh, to infinity, uh, the bilateral and unilateral Laplace transforms are the same. So for values of t greater than zero, this u of t is one. So I have e to the minus a t times 1 times e to the minus s t d t. So I can write this then as the integral from 0 to infinity e to the minus a t e to the minus s t d t. And I can write this now as the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus a plus s t dt. Okay, so now again we're integrating with respect to t, so this minus a plus s is a constant, and I can take that out, or, or then, so this integral then becomes um, 1 over, or minus 1 over a plus s e to the minus a plus s t evaluated at 0 and infinity. Okay, so let's look at the easy limit first. When I have t equals to 0, I plug in a 0 for t here, and this whole thing just becomes 1. Okay, when I have t going to infinity, then depending on what happens with a plus s, either e to the minus a plus st will go to infinity or it'll go to zero. And in order for this to work, 
I want it to go to 0, because if it goes to infinity, then I don't have a closed form solution that I can use. So assume for a moment that it goes to 0, and we'll come back and figure out exactly what has to be true to make it go to 0. This becomes then 1 over s plus a, where what I've done here is I've interchanged s plus a, or a plus s to s plus a, because this is the way you usually see it written. So this is the result that you see. Uh, this is a very useful result. It gets used all the time. The idea that if I have a decaying exponential e to the minus at, that the Laplace transform of it is 1 over s plus a. Now, we haven't talked yet about the region of convergence. So let's talk for a minute about the region of convergence. Um, we'll tidy up a bit of space here. OK, so I can find the region of convergence by finding where the limit as t approaches infinity of e to the minus s plus a t, where this limit is equal to 0. In order for this limit to be 0, I need um, the real part, which I denote as this, of s plus a to be greater than 0. Because if the real part of s plus a is greater than 0, t is greater than 0. So the product of s plus a, or at least the product of the real part of s plus a, times t will be greater than 0. I multiply that by a negative sign. And that then says that as t gets really big, uh, this gets really close to 0. So you'll remember that s is got, it has a real part of sigma and an imaginary part of j omega. So in order for this to be true, I need sigma plus a to be greater than 0, or sigma has to be greater than negative a. Okay. This defines the region of convergence. Um, some of you, well, just to back up for a second, some of you may be wondering what's happening to the j omega. Uh, it turns out that e to the minus j omega never gets greater than 1 or less than negative 1. If this seems confusing to you, uh, you should watch the videos uh, that show how to compute the Laplace transform of a unit step function where it's more clearly explained. So anyway, um, I have this expression as my region of convergence. So if I draw this on the complex plane, this is real and imaginary, I have a value out here of uh, minus a, and the area that I'm looking at as my region of convergence is everywhere where the real part of s is greater than negative a. So this is my region of convergence. Okay. So basically, this is the result for the Laplace transform of an exponential. Uh, I get 1 over s plus a as the transform. The region of convergence is everything to the right of negative a. Um, now, again, for this particular signal x, the bilateral Laplace transform is the same as a unilateral Laplace transform. Uh, I can also, and I'm not going to do this in the video, uh, take this uh, decaying exponential and uh, flip it so that it looks like this. Okay. And if I take the bilateral Laplace transform of, of this waveform, I also end up with 1 over s plus a. But now my region of convergence is uh, to the left of, uh, I believe, positive a. I'd have to actually check that by doing it, and I don't want to. Um, but basically, I have the same 
the same expression in terms of s, but a different region of convergence. So uh, again, uh, most of the time we're dealing with signals that are 0 for values of t less than 0. So we don't really have to worry about the difference between the unilateral and bilateral Laplace transform. So this concludes this example.